I wish I had one of those scary voices, like those real deep ones that they use in horror movies whenever I start the podcast. Because this is the Dark Horde, Dark Horde episode number 17. It looks like my mic is on fire right now. It, it, it kills me because I was testing it for like 20 minutes and it was fine. And now uh, it's like I'm trying to talk to the guys who are on the ISS right now. That's That's how horrible it looks like right now. Uh, that's the life of a podcaster, ladies and gentlemen. That's how it works. Welcome to the Dark Court. I am your host, Manny. Today is going to be a little bit different. Today we have one news article to talk about. There is a a place close to Niagara Falls that's celebrating something historical that has to do with something not so nice, something mischievous. Something that if I found it in my home, I'd have to kill it. Or run really fast. Because, I don't know. Some people think uh, they, they think these things are cute and uh, nice to have them around. And then there's other people like myself that, um, sorry, uh, these entities should not be allowed to hang out in your place, your abode, where you have your family, or anywhere else thereof. There is a story from back in the 1800s. And again, I cannot... I cannot um, say this enough, but when you have places that are so damn old, there's bound to be some kind of evil entity just hanging around, trying to start some shit, if they, as they say, and um, it's not cool, not cool at all. Um, today we will have a, a bit of a special guest after that article, we'll uh, play a couple songs and uh, get them ready to call in, looks like the Ortiz family is going to share some ghost stories. You know, not too long ago we had uh, Tom Selleck, I mean Green Man, on here. And uh, he was giving us some stories regarding some ghost history, especially around the area where he lives. Which is, again, these old places, they have so many entities that attach themselves to them that um, there's a gift that keeps on giving. Uh, we have a live chat. The crew is in there now. We have GameVit. We have Pucky. And uh, let's see, uh, that's it. Get, what's going on? There's a little light today. Come on, guys. Let's get on here. Let's do it. And Dre is going to be on here later uh, to give us some stories. The first story is going to be a bit historical. Uh, nothing too fancy. Now, next Saturday, I just want to throw this out there before we get started. Chris will be back to do his uh, psychic duty. And he's going to take calls. Next Saturday. So whatever it is you want to know about, you want to be here live in order to get that call in. As a matter of fact, if you're a little nervous, a little skittish, a lot of people don't like calling in to shows, you know, TV shows, radio shows, podcasts. They get um, tongue-tied. That shit, I do it all the time and I'm doing the podcast. But um, if you don't want to do that, you don't want to call in, you can join Spreaker and uh, use the live chat to put your question out there. Now, I don't know how it works. You know, there used to be like psychics back in the day. They need to know like when you were born, what city, the last four, your social security number, how many kids you got, how many of them you killed off, how many are still alive. I don't know how it works with Chris. I don't know if he's going to need to know something personal about you. But we're going to find out next Saturday. Um, I believe the time is 9 p.m. But uh, if you follow me on social media, that is the best way for you to find out at what time Chris will be on. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be hilarious, I think. And uh, he also has a story that he has to tell. He actually, the last time he was here, he told me a little something that I didn't know about him. About him. So we're going to ask him live. So let's play a little track, get into the first story, and get the show on the road.
That was a cute little song there. It was fantastic. By the way, I just was joined by a co-host. Hey, guys. That's right. The missus is here uh, getting ready for the Ortiz family stories. Uh, It should be exciting. Hopefully, they got some good scary shit to share with everyone. So we'll see. But for the moment, we're going to talk about our current story, which has to do with... uh, Niagara Falls, no less. Now, here's a place that I always wanted to go to and visit uh, when I lived in New York especially, but I never got to do it. I don't think I want to go anymore. Apparently, Fort Niagara has a hobgoblin. (laughs) And you guys who know Marvel, it's not the same guy. It's not the ugly guy that's riding on that damn uh, flying wing or wherever the hell it is. No, it's a hobgoblin. It's a guy that's uh, always causing a whole bunch of problems. So the first thing I did was, I said, well, you know, I'm only used to the Marvel guy. So what really what really is a hobgoblin, per se? So apparently this guy shows up in the folklore a lot. And some people at one time considered the hobgoblin to be a helpful entity. You know, helping people out, kind of cleaning up the home and stuff when everybody was sleeping. I mean, <laughs> that is nuts. I want one. Sign me up. Yeah. Well, I think we have a few. They're just related to us. <laughs> um, so that is the craziest story. But apparently when Christianity came on the scene, that was like, oh, no. No, no, no. Those little ugly short guys, they're they are not helpful. They're demons. Now, how do you go from a bunch of little dudes that are cleaning your house up while you're sleeping to them being evil demons is beyond me. But that's what happened. Now, many of you know a hobgoblin from uh, your high school days because Puck, in A Midsummer Night's Dream, was a hobgoblin. And then, of course, you know it uh, from other things like uh, movies and stuff like that. But um, they're usually described as small, hairy little men uh, who like their close relatives as broonies, and that's from the Scots as brunies are often found within human dwellings. They're doing odd jobs around the house, and uh, they do that while the family's asleep. Uh, they do things like chores, small tasks, like dusting and ironing. Where the, where the hell is our uh, hobgoblin? I'm going to go to Amazon, and I'm going to find them. I mean, it's like, <laughs> did they get fired? Is that what happened? Did they drink all the vodkas? Because we're running low. That's what happened, babe. That's our what happened to the vodkas. <laughs> we have a drunk hobgoblin. Damn him. Um, and only uh, pretty much what they do for they do this just for the fuck of it no they do this to get fed hobgoblins in the beginning uh, before Christianity all they'd want was a little bit of food in our case vodka (laughs) Um, so again this is what the story is uh, prior to Christianity coming on the scene now there is a story that dates back to the 1800s out of Fort Niagara Uh, about a hobgoblin and apparently he's pretty popular now Fort Niagara is a a fort that was uh, built to protect the interests of New France in North America Uh, it is located near Youngston New York on the eastern bank of the Niagara River um, or at the mouth at the eastern bank and um, uh, it's off of uh, Lake Ontario now, the actual fort was opened in 1726 and is about 250 acres. Significant size and place. Isn't that big? I don't think I could live in a fort, though. Um, they seem of, really scary. I don't want to cut that grass. That's no, okay. cut, no, forget oh. about it. You know how many people probably died there? <laughs> That's just scary. It's too scary to me. According to uh, Mason Winfield, he's a historian out there in uh, Fort Niagara, um, there is a story about a hobgoblin that was more like a, a prankster than anything else. Uh, there was a young piper by the name of John Carroll in 1804 who was punished for drunkenness, you see. <laughs> There's an alcohol connection here <laughs> exactly. at every turn. So we need to lock up the alcohol in the cabinet because we have a hobgoblin. He's a drunkard. Um, so it turns out that um, he, he got a little mouthy, actually with the dudes in charge at the fort. And so they put him in a pit, which was a solitary confinement, because he was also drunk at the time. 
So they put him in the pit in front of one of the buildings, and according to Carol, he claimed that he was visited by a hobgoblin, a.k.a. demon. Yeah, can you imagine being thrown into a dark pit and being drunk, <laughs> and all of a sudden, a demon shows up? I just, it's just nuts. That's just scary as, as can be. Uh, and of course, the thing is, I mean, it's back to the 1700s, right? So what did they have, like torches? I'm sure I'm sure those fuckers turned off all the torches and left his ass in the dark. That's pretty sad. Um, apparently, while he was down there, the demon, Hobgoblin, instructed him to write a song. The article for this particular report is in the description for the podcast episode. Um, there is actually a video in there from the local news station, uh, WGRZ that um, did the interview at the time. They have recorded in the video the hymn that uh, Caro was instructed to write. Now, I d- <laughs> the weird thing is that the hymn sounds really happy. Like, I don't understand. I was thinking it was going to be some crazy, dark, you know, mysterious, horrible thing. Like something you'd want to kill yourself after <laughs> listening, but no. Sounded like a commercial, um, yeah. Yeah, it was like, hey guys, let's go march. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he repented while he was down there. I don't, I don't know what the story is, but that is just really weird. But if you go ahead and check out this uh, particular article, um, you can listen to the hymn. Like I said, it's really, um, it's a happy-go-lucky type of hymn. <laughs> I, I don't get it. Um, it must have been some good alcohol. That's all I got to say. Right. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, so I listened to it. I was great. That's good. I love it. But it turns out that later on in 1812, the freaking thing happened again. The hobgoblin showed up, and um, he was near a graveyard in the area. Uh, Bugs had joined us. <laughs> um, so he was in a graveyard this time. And uh, another drunken soldier was on patrol, and um, during a lightning strike, he noticed the hobgoblin, the demon, standing in the graveyard. Oh, hell no. <laughs> nope. No. Uh, yeah, no. So what happened? He took off running. <laughs> he actually fired his rifle at the demon, Hobgoblin, and he ran off. And he um, ran right into a barricade and knocked himself out. <laughs> you, you can't write this stuff. You can't even make this stuff up. <laughs> Um, he was scared shitless. So when his commander came over and uh, they found him, they got him up. They opened up his canteen and get, guess what was in it? <laughs> My vodka. Yeah, apparently his canteen was not full of water or anything uh, nutritious. It was full of alcohol. So here's another one in, uh, in, in Niagara that apparently when you get a hobgoblin... He just sniffs you out just for the alcohol because that's what's <laughs> happening here. Uh, so in the 1800s, hobgoblins like to chase around people who are drunk okay. and, and make appearances. <laughs> I mean, that is freaking hilarious. I get that every night, but he's shaped like a, a Boston Terrier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely nuts. Uh, that's a story that is linked in the description. Uh, and again, these are buildings. These buildings are so old. And they've been through so much. Because as a fort, you know they saw some action uh, protecting that particular part of the Niagara River. So I'm sure there's a lot of uh, spirits and uh, especially hobgoblins attached to the place. Because what do you do? What do you do when you have nothing better to do than to walk around the place? You got to get drunk. Got to get yourself a little liquor on you. (laughs) A little different kind of spirit, I would assume. That's probably what I'll do when I die. I'm going to be a hobgoblin getting drunk. Stealing all my liquor. Yes. Yeah. That is hilarious. Um, Yeah, so that's the story. We're going to, uh, I guess, get ready, right? Um, The other announcement for the podcast is that more than likely, it will go to once a month after we uh, have our little sit-down with Chris this week. So, um, what can I say? But to stay on top of everything that's going on with the podcast itself behind the scenes the other three weeks that it's not going to be on live you can go over to Twitter um, and follow us on Twitter and on the Facebook page on Twitter I can say this much the podcast is growing pretty fast 
with followers because we have a lot of uh, fiction, paranormal writers and things like that that are sharing the podcast because our Dark Horde bot is uh, programmed to find popular paranormal books and things like that and uh, groups and pretty much share whatever they're they're tweeting. And there's a lot of great stories on there. And recently there was one about a sanitarium out in Ohio that's going up for sale. And the, there's a paranormal group, uh, investigating group that's out there that was looking to purchase the sanitarium and had a GoFundMe page going. <laughs> now, um, the thing is that I asked them to come on the podcast so that they can tell us about the sanitarium. But, um, like I said, the, the tweets are going are fast and furious. So I was trying to get in touch with them before I got on just now, just to have them call in and tell us about this place. But um, I never, I never could find them again. Gone like the wind. Um, so hopefully they were able to uh, get the money together. I think the sanitarium was going for about two hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars for a sanitarium. Shit, that's pretty cheap because most sanitariums are freaking humongous. They could turn that into like an Airbnb. No, I would not buy that for five dollars. I would not. No, no. Wouldn't it be nice though? No. I mean, really, that's that's an attraction. Here's the thing: there's a lot of people out there who accidentally buy haunted places. You know, these fuckers are going mm-hmm. in. They're doing what they're getting. So yeah. yeah, make it work for yourself. Have lock-ins. Have you know, do crazy stuff like that, and have the people scared shitless. I'm sure as a sanitarium. You know, people die like crazy in them things. So I'm sure it has a, a really long history, and that's the reason why they want to buy the place. Um, but apparently, if um, if the place is not sold to someone, um, it will get um, demolished. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Uh, so we got a couple of tracks we're going to play, and then we're going to open up the lines to uh, a couple of folks that want to share some scary stuff. We'll be right back. I've been wasting my time. I don't know why I can't get you out of my mind. And if I find a way to get it when I do it, I can live it and forget it. How much I love you or I hate how you just put me in my feelings I just wish you understood the gravity but you got no sinners I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember I've been wasting my time I don't know why I can't get you out my mind now I'm so lost, where do I go? I was in a chase, caught a flat on road It was all love, ex no O I was feeling rich, but we turned out bro North Pole, life so cold Lukewarm love, just took it to the stove You were bad, news, all kind, no pro We grew apart fast I guess we was reaping what we sold I guess we was unequally yoked Guess if we was putting on the shoulder Guess we should have tried to take it slow then. Guess I let my feelings take control Guess I let my demon take the will Used to think that we'd be growing old Now I can't believe that it was real It was back in late December when I did it I just wish I could forget it Cause I hate how much I love it Oh, I hate how I just love to catch a feeling Told me that you understood the gravity, but now I know you didn't. I guess it's better just to live it and forget it than to live it and remember.
Hey, we're back, and uh, we have a special guest right now on the phone, and uh, she's joining us to uh, tell us some of her uh, scary experiences. Isn't that right, Davina? Yes, sir. Oh, oh, she said, sir. <laughs> Hilarious. Wait a minute. Where is Mr. Ortiz? He's right here next to me. Oh, is he asleep? He should be, but no. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. No. Yeah, they take He's right. standing oh, right in front of me asking me what's happening. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right, so listen, I heard you got some crazy ghost stories. So, uh, But before we get to that, um, you know, like when Green Man was on, he had to tell us a little bit about himself. So you have to share a little bit about yourself and um, pretty much what got you to this point like talking to us um honestly my husband (laughs) (laughs) um he asked me if i would go and um tell y'all what happened to me on it was at my aunt's house and i had no idea what was going on until it happened wait a minute so what went down um um well i was going through a divorce and so of course i moved in with my aunt And it had already been maybe about three or four nights that I'd stayed there. I could, and my aunt and my uncle stay up all night watching TV. Both of them are retired, so they don't have a care in the world. I am asleep in my room, and their room has a hallway, a bathroom, and then their room between the room I was staying in and their room. And, but you could still hear, like, when they'd come in and out of the room. Mm-hmm. Well, heard their door, just like if they walked out of their room. Door steps come out of the room and go, like, disappear into the living room. And then the door steps, I'm sorry, the footsteps come back a little while later. But instead of them just going into my aunt's room, they come down the hallway. And you can hear footsteps. And never hear the door open, and I had always closed the door when I was in the room, and the door never opened. Well, all of a sudden, I felt something or someone sat on the edge of the bed. Oh, I, I hate feel, that feeling. Yes. And I could feel the pressure, like the blanket, kind of, you know, how it goes tighter. Oh. And... I am stuck. I I sleep on my tummy, face down. So I am now stuck. My arms, like I sleep with my hands above my head, of course, tummy down, and I can't move at all. I'm breathing, but I can't move. So now I feel somebody sitting next to me about mid-waist, and then pressure comes to the other side, where it kind of felt like they were leaning over me. So the Ooh, hand hey, is on the that? other side of me. Yeah. And it it doesn't feel angry. It doesn't feel like it's something that wanted to hurt me. It more felt like it was saying, who are you? Like trying to figure out who I was in this room. And it sat there for a while, just kind of staring is all I could feel. And I'm trying and trying to move. Finally, I jerk and, you know, my arm goes up. Nothing's there. I turn, door to the bedroom, completely closed. And I'm listening to see if I can hear my aunt and uncle, the TV, anything. Nothing's on anymore. And I start freaking out. Yeah, I had that happen to me when I was a kid. Oh, my God. I can't imagine it as a kid. No. That is so scary. So, did have your aunt and uh, and uncle ever had experiences like that in the house? Well, that was just it. So, in the morning, I get up. I'm still working in San Antonio. So, I'm driving from Corpus to San Antonio. I get to work. I'm there. I finally, I call my aunt because she's messaging me. Hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? And I tell her, will everybody be home tonight? 
And she says, well, yeah, I'm going to make us dinner. What time will you come back? I said, well, I'm leaving work at 3, so I should be there about, you know, 5, 30, 6 o'clock. She says, okay, I'll have dinner ready. And so when I get there, I'm not hungry. I'm still freaking out. And my aunt looks at me like, oh, crap, what happened? And I'm like, I really need to tell you something, but I need you to take this seriously. Mm. And she's just looking at me like, what could you possibly be wanting to tell me? And she's looking at her husband, and he's looking at me like, and he's concerned. And so I start telling them, well, my aunt, my uncle, sorry, jumps out of the couch and starts yelling at my aunt, I told you, I told you, Uh-oh. it's not me fighting <laughs> with myself. Apparently, whatever is in this house, fights with my uncle. Ooh, my uncle. see, that's not nice. Oh. Yes. Hold him down. So now, not only is my uncle going ballistic, but my little cousin just starts crying. And when I say little cousin, she's, you know, 22 years old. She's little to me. Right, <laughs> and right. she's sitting on the couch just crying, and I'm like, what's wrong? And I thought she was upset because her dad's yelling at her mom. And she goes, I tried to tell her that this happened to me, and she wouldn't listen to me. Mm. She told me I was crazy. But, of course, my mom, my aunt is telling her daughter, just just stop. She doesn't want to hear it. Wow. That's so apparently it happened scary. to my cousin, my uncle, everybody but my aunt. Oh, look at that. Wow. Now that's bananas, right? How everyone else, yeah. except for her. Wow. And she said she's never seen anything, never heard anything, noises. Um, the other thing that happened, same house, uh, we were having a birthday party a few months later, um, and everybody's taking photos in the backyard. Well, we start reviewing photos, and there is a silhouette of a woman in the back door. Hmm. And so, of course, everybody's outside. We try to figure out, okay, who's in the who's in the window? And it's not just one or two photos. It's almost every photo that's towards the house. And it's the same so, house? Oh, yes. This is wow. at the same house. That is so, bananas. <clears throat> and it's so weird, right, that your aunt doesn't experience it, but yet everyone's telling her this is what's going down. Wow. That is just crazy. Yes. And has <laughs> anything happened in the house that she's aware of, you know, like maybe before um, she bought the house or anything like that? I don't think that they ever researched it, Oof. but it is an older neighborhood. So I'm mm. not too sure. I didn't stay very long. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yep. <laughs> thank you, Tia. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I was like, thank oh you so much. God. I got to play. <laughs> <laughs> I got places to be. Um, <laughs> so here, here's the wow. question, though. So since everyone else was experiencing it, now the room that you stayed in, was that your, your cousin? Was that your cousin? Is that her room? That was her room, yes. Oh, look at that. Yeah. But. But the, where my uncle stayed was the room down the hallway, and that's where it would fight with him. And really? my aunt would say wow. it, whatever it was was choking him to the point where his hands were full fist, and he's trying to uh, push whatever it is holding him down, and he's not breathing. Where he was turning purple because he's whatever it was was uh, suffocating him. Wait, so they still wow. live there today? No, they have moved out. Oh, oh God, <laughs> good. They have moved <laughs> out. <laughs> that is scary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tainu, sorry. Yeah, wow. <laughs> wow, that is bananas. That is yeah. crazy. Yeah, and so it's weird how, um, I, I don't know if just a, it's a thing with Latin families, that there's stories like these all the time, because my grandma would talk about all the time when she was growing up, how uh, she, she grew up in Puerto Rico, and so she lived in a haunted place, and she would always have something pull her from under the sheets, and um, it was just weird, and the house is still there today. Well, it was there like about five years ago. It's a little wooden house that probably, <laughs> uh, I think a good wind would blow it over, and it probably isn't there anymore because of the hurricanes, um, but it was the scariest place to walk into, and I could just picture in my head her being there as a little girl 
and, and just being attacked by whatever this was. It's just it's just crazy. Um, totally nuts. So yeah, that definitely is a scary story for sure. Wow, that is scary. Did you there? Did we lose her? No, I'm still here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, gotcha. Now I see that um, someone is using your ID to type in the chat. Mr. Andre is. <laughs> yeah, Mr. He, Andre. He gave me his phone and ran away with mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so apparently, apparently he has questions about the cowboys. A cowboy? No, the cowboys. You know, the team. Oh, the. Oh, I don't care about the Cowboys. <laughs> you see, it's because you don't care to keep asking us about the Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I care more funny. about Amanda Nunes, who's going to fight tonight. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. She's fighting tonight, huh? Yes, she is. Uh, that yeah, that would be my girl crush. UFC stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's uh, let's talk. You have any more scary stories you want to share? By the way, that is it. Well, that was definitely scary, and the guys in the uh, the chat box, they agree. That's some freaky yeah. stuff right there. Um, don't ever return to that house. But by no. the way, uh, maybe we should go visit that house. Hell no. No. <laughs> Not even to go trick-or-treat. They're no. like two hours. Where did the uh, did your aunt and uncle, they lived in Corpus Christi also? Yes, they do. And I have a good friend of mine lives right across the street. So if they know who moved in, I can definitely tell her. If they can have us, you know, over as guests. Yeah. No. <laughs> he didn't yeah, that's sound a good very idea. To... Uh, confident in that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, so you would be okay going back? Like you would, you wouldn't be Yeah, nervous? I mean, it only happened the one time, to me, like, where I was, but like I said, it didn't feel like an angry person. It felt more like, they're trying to figure out, or the person, or whatever it was, was just trying to figure out who was in that room. Yeah, but Davina, Not... let's be honest here. Your <laughs> uncle was being choked out like the Conor <laughs> McGregor of ghosts. <laughs> like he was All on can... him. <laughs> yeah. All I can think is he made whoever it is very mad. Uh, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe it could be. Could be. Per- this thing just doesn't like men. I don't know. You know, and that oh, could be a thing too. You know? Actually, yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's actually, how I slept better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, that's what I told myself. Oh, God. That is crazy. Oh, that is too funny. All right, so I guess we have to kind of... Um, oh, I don't know where the uh, that, kid, that ghost box is at. It's actually gone. Uh, but let's talk to Andre for a second because uh, I know he wants okay. to get on here and chit chat for a bit. <laughs> yes, he's. Hold on, Andre. I made him go to the other room because the he had the phone too loud. I couldn't hear what was going uh, on, so I'm going to switch phones with him. Okay. It was nice talking to you. Hello. Hey, welcome to the show. Hello. Are you there? Yeah, I'm there. All right, so listen, let's talk about this because apparently um, when you married your wife, she came along with a ghost. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been to that house and she never told me that story until like two years later after we'd been in there and it's just a dark place. They have that dark paneling on it. Uh-huh. So you walk in and the living room is just like the living room and the dining room are all like a one straight shot and like you take four steps and you take a ride into the rooms there. And it's that dark wood, that old, you know what I'm talking about, that dark paneling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, the one where they, uh, in the movies, they kill people. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, it, it makes the shiny look bright. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is hilarious. Wow. Yeah, so, I mean, I was there, like, we had gone a couple of times and never thought anything of it, but it just, it looked like a creepy house, you know? When you took, they told me that, I was like, really, babe? You didn't tell me that earlier. Yeah, yeah, she could have told you before, right? could have been following me home. <laughs> yeah, we're having a full disclosure. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know what? I'd rather know after I leave the place. Because, like, my mom tries to tell me that she sees stuff in the house when I go visit her. And I tell her, whoa, whoa, do you want me to leave right now and get a room? And she's like, no. I was like, okay, tell me on the phone on the trip back to San Antonio. Don't tell me right now. Because she sees things in the house also. 
And she'll try to tell me, she's like, you know what I see in the room you're sleeping in? I'm like, nah, stop, <laughs> stop. I'm about to go get a hotel room. Oh, you but you, stop. Okay, we have a story about that, by the way. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, Andre, you're familiar with, like, Harlingen in that area, right? Oh, yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so she, her family is from Harlingen. And so I went to visit. So they have uh, houses side by side. They have an older house. And so all the ghost stories are from there. And, you know, the, the lady dressed in white walking around and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so the first night that I went there, I, w- I wanted to go in, right? You know, so I'm brave as hell, right? I don't give no fucks. <laughs> so, so I went in, I walked around, and, you know, so my wife's like, do you feel anything? It's like, no, it just feels like no one lives here. So that night, we went into the, the houses next to it where the family lives, and in the middle of the night, something just pounced on my chest, and I woke up, and I couldn't breathe. I was like, what the hell just happened here? But here's the crazy part. The kids were in another room, and one of them had the same experience the same night. Crazy. Mm-hmm. But, again, like Harlingen and those areas down down that part of Texas, yeah. uh, you know, All they've been through a lot, a lot of storms, uh, a lot of death. A lot of things that happened um, back in the day. So, yeah, I'm not surprised that there's so many places in the southern part of Texas that, that have these stories attached to them. So it's exciting, to be honest. It's uh, <laughs> it's very, uh, it, it's, I guess it's normal for people already around this area. It's not really yeah, scared mm-hmm. because they, uh, I, uh, I, I don't want to use the word promote, but they, it's like, it's like, um, it's like a loose dog running down the street. You're just used to it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Actually, you're you're you just hit it on the head. That is that's so on point. Because my mom just like nothing. She's used to it already. And she's like, yeah, I saw this here and I saw that there. And so I always tell her, Mom, Mom, I love you, Mom. I'm about to pack up the truck and I'm about to leave. You're telling the wrong kid. I you forget I'm the chicken. And she's like, Oh yeah, I forgot. And so I was like, So you tell me when I'm driving home. Don't tell me when I'm about to go to sleep in the room that you're about to tell me what you saw in that room. So I sleep with a light on. She's like, no, you're good. Just sleep with candles on. I'm, so I'm, I'm probably going to start a, a room fire one day because I sleep with candles what? in the room. Yeah. Uh, Pucky says well, that I'm, Texas I'm... Texas probably has uh, a lot of ghost stories due to a lot of the history and, you know, cowboys and, wow. and years of war and stuff like that. <laughs> well, yeah, well, like real cowboys. Oh, I thought you were talking about <laughs> Dallas Cowboys. Other way, it is. I, I, th- I think it's your that. mom I'm getting back listening. to you for you acting up as a kid all the time when you were growing up. So she's just getting back at you now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm scaring you. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, <laughs> a game viz says that there's something um, howling in the background. <laughs> Actually, Bugs is snoring away. He's not too far from the mic. That might be it. Uh, but the howling usually comes on the back end. So <laughs> It's whistling. That is too funny. Listen, I'm glad you guys got on the show, and that really, really was a good story. That's scary. That yeah, she stayed that's there. That was mad. That's I probably would have curled up with my aunt and uncle in bed. I'm like, nope, nope. I don't care how old I am. I would have curled up with them. Nope. And her uncle's he ain't no skinny guy. He's a big. He's kind of a big dude. He's mm. like uh, he's got to be like five eight, and he's got to at least be pushing two eighty. He's a big dude. He ain't no skinny small Mexican guy. He's a he's one of the bigger Mexican guys. <laughs> and for him not to be able to push somebody off of him, that's got to be pretty strong. Oh, man. Yeah, no kidding. That's yeah, scary. but you know, at least they got up. That's that usually is my question. Did you at least get the hell out? Don't stay there yeah. talking about you. You'll work through it. No, no, fuck no. Get out. <laughs> well, it didn't mess with the girls. It only messed with them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you know what? Let me tell you something about that old house. And well, what my sister in law said, and my sister in law was is real sensitive to. I guess. um I guess paranormal things, but I've I've never no I'm lying I I have seen something but outside of that house, but my brothers have all seen something my dad has seen something and my mom has, and my sister in law actually said that it's it's a woman she felt it like the first day we never we didn't tell her anything about the house, and with the first day when she walked in there she's like there's something off there's something wrong. She's like it. It it doesn't like men. There's there's something wrong, and I feel and like she didn't want to. She didn't want to visit anymore. She's like something feels off, and and it 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 likes your mom, but it's, it's angry. 
So she says that she thinks it's like my, something with my mom. I, I don't know. I just know I don't like going to that house. So Angry <laughs> women ghosts. What, yeah. uh, what? I mean, come on, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hush. <laughs> Well, Andre, hey, um, I don't have the ghost box here to ask about the Cowboys, but I Come think on, tonight we're going to get on with GameVit, and uh, we'll ask that question then. Oh, I'm a, I'll get on, too. I want to make sure I get a good answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the Cowboys need a good answer, too. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, we're going to have you back on here again. And one of these days we'll head down to uh, Corpus, and join up, and all of us can go uh, ghost hunting down there. Actually, there's a there's a because I have a group of people here right now. And there's a, a friend of mine. Her sister lives lives in Kingsville. And their Uh-oh. house is haunted. And really, they live there. It's a two story, and mm. they have really good stories. Like I want to get. I was thinking right now. I asked the name is the the lady's name's Angie. Her sister, Angie's sister, that lives lives in Kingsville, and they have a ghost that kind of messes with the husband. And like moving shit around and slamming doors and wa- what? Uh, the whole the typical haunting oh, wow. of a house, they have it and they I mean they it's her her two kids and her husband and they live there and they they just like in it. it's like a walk a dog walking down the street they're used to it already oh, I want to no, get her see. I want to get her to see if she talks hmm. well now wait a minute how long has she lived there Oh they've lived there probably ten years plus. Oh, that's it. They're married to the ghost. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> They're married to the ghost. <laughs> but like with them, they've with already them gotten up. used to it. They already know. If something's out of play, oh, it's the ghost. No, I couldn't do that. I, that's like, the person I, I want to hear. live in a place like that. Mm-mm. I Neither could I. I'd, I'd be like, uh, like Davina always tells me, when you hear something like a ghost or something, you open the door and say, you can leave now. You kind of help them out, help the spirit leave the house. And I'm like, that makes sense. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but you're not in that state of mind when you hear it. You're at, you're at two o'clock at night and you hear a baby cry, and you don't have no kid. Wow! <laughs> no, no. Wait, did that happen to them? No, I'm just saying that's oh. kind of <laughs> you're, you're not in the state of mind. It's like, no, uh, no, why am I hearing baby cry? No, I would be gone. Are you kidding me? Screw the mortgage. I'm done. Uh, I already told Manny. I'll, I'll I'm going to give him. You. I'm going to give him a, a quick, just like a heads up while I'm packing. And I'd like for him to meet me in the truck. But if he doesn't or if he's too slow, uh, I don't I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, we can go to Kingsville and we can uh, we can just stay. I think she'll let us stay the night at her house. She's done it before. Well, she's, like, they took off and they do <laughs> I have a feeling it'll just be me and Bugs. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be at the hotel. We'll FaceTime. <laughs> Oh, man. Well, Dre, thank you for joining us. Find out if she'll come on, and maybe we'll just do a special episode just for her, because that sounds like scary oh, yeah. shit. That, mm-hmm. She'll fill up the whole damn hour. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's what we need. We'll take a break and let her take over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Hey, don't forget to show on the, right, uh, get on the, the Game Vet show so we can uh, talk about them cowboys. Okay, sir. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right, have a good Bye. one. Bye-bye. Well. There you go, folks. That was a uh, game vet. I mean, game vet. <laughs> the Ortiz family, Dre and Davina, uh, talking about some scary ass shit. Let's mm-hmm. take a quick break, and uh, we'll be right back.
Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was uh, Davina and Andre. And uh, you usually hear me talking about them during the podcast, especially UFO Buster Radio, during the week because they're on there live uh, chatting away with the rest of the group. And it's good to hear. It's good to hear the folks that listen to the podcast come in and share their story because um, how else are people going to know that this is really happening out there? It's not just in fucking movies for the love of Pete. Come on. None of it is. None of the paranormal. None of the UFO shit. It's not just in movies. It happens to real people every day. Do you imagine? Like, I want to talk to her uncle now. Find out what the hell was going on. Uh, shit. That is some scary as hell stuff. I thank you guys for listening today and uh, being part of this podcast. And apparently, due to popular demand and uh, a direct order from the missus, the podcast should go to uh, bi-weekly instead of once a month. <laughs> You see who runs the show around here, folks. Do you see that? Uh, hopefully, we will uh, get on tonight on Game Vet, Game Vet's uh, YouTube channel. So, Because uh, he's got a haunted place. He's got a, some hauntings going on that he's been researching. And uh, we're going to join him. And it's quite a few of us that are in um, on the live chat right now are going to be on there. And uh, we got to get to the bottom of this and find out what's going to happen with the uh, Dallas Cowboys this year. Are they going to get it together? I mean, come on. Eventually, even they got to get a winning streak going on. Ciao. Killing me, you're killing me